Hello, welcome to Bub's World. I'm your host, Bub. Today, we're going to get into the comic haul that I picked up from 2024 Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina. So, let's see how I did. You're watching Bub's Comics, Bub. All right, so... Real quick and easy, uh, I went to Heroes Con, as all as you all, everybody knows. Everybody was at Heroes Con. Uh, it was it was a big, uh, b- best convention, really. Just the absolute best convention um, for comic books. For purely comic books and comic book artists and creators and everything like that, it's the best uh, for anybody. So no matter what you collect, no matter what kind of comics you collect, it's the best one. So just throwing that out there for anybody who needed to know that, hadn't heard that yet, now you've heard it, tell them Bub sent you. So, I went there, and as usual, I was focused on mostly Golden Age books or some major keys here and there, some Silver Age keys. This is what I'm hunting. This is what I collect. Uh, and I collect some modern stuff, and I, and I did get some signatures and some original art and stuff like that. I'll show that in another haul. This here is just the comic haul. So, let's start out with the convention exclusive uh, Heroes Convention comic that they came out with. So, you can see that. Look at that. Very nice. Very well done. I, I was impressed with it. I really have to say that I like these convention comics. Now, inside has all the creators. It has the floor plan and all that good stuff. So, this is really... Um, it's a little beat up where I actually used it. So, it's not like a pristine copy that I'm trying to keep and, and preserve forever. So, But I'm just proud to have it and, and glad that I picked one up and used it. And uh, so, there it is. Uh, the Heroes Con 2024 convention book. All right. Now, I put these alphabetical. Um, a lot of times I'll do it in the order in which I hunted them, but for a three day con, there's a lot going on. Um, but this is the alphabetical order uh, of, of the books that I picked up. And you're very lucky because the very first book is an outstanding uh, book. This book. <sighs> I don't want to talk about my failures in this at this convention, <laughs> but basically I was going after trying to work on two runs that I have, which is a Planet Comics run and a Strange Worlds run, right? So I'm working on those two Golden Age runs, but I'm kind of turning into a little bit of a Golden Age run collector, or at least a set collector. So I have those two runs that I've been working on, and I was really hoping to find something there that I didn't have already. That didn't work out for me too well. Um, but as you saw in a previous haul, I was able to get some that I already had slabbed. So it still helped overall. However, I was after those two books. So I went through the whole convention trying to find those books, uh, those those two runs. And I didn't find any that I didn't already have that weren't reasonably priced or a good grade or whatever I was hunting for. They just didn't, didn't scratch that itch. So this book represented basically the price range that I was looking to spend on one of those other books that I didn't end up finding. So I found this book instead and I've never seen this book in the wild. I've never seen it in, and I consider a convention the wild, but I've never seen this book anywhere uh, other than online. And the colors on it were just amazing. And it's a run I was gonna work on next year. So I get a little bit of a jump ahead but it's Captain Science number seven. And just take a look at those colors, folks. I mean, just look at that. I don't know what else to say, but it's just beautiful. It's a killer, killer cover. And as you can see, uh, the the skeleton man, he's got the woman in bondage, so it, it checks off the bondage cover. It checks off skulls and skeletons, ray guns. The guy has a little like bubble helmet. Checks that box. It just checks checks all the boxes. Bright yellow cover. It's just everything. Woman in red. So she's shackled by the neck, and he the skeleton's carrying uh, dragging her into a coffin. I just just amazing stuff I gotta say this was definitely on the book list I knew that when I had decided to go after this run of Captain Science that it was going to be a difficult thing to complete 
But I truly believe this would be the hardest book to find and to get a nice copy of. It's also one of the books that I wanted a good copy of because it's just such a striking cover. There's hardly anywhere on here where you can lose any art. So it had to be a very complete cover as well. And the whole thing just looks fantastic. And I have not collected any other issues in this run yet. But when I do, I doubt that they're as amazing and striking as this one is. So this one will get sent off to grading for sure because it's just so beautiful. It has its issues. It's golden age. It's got a little wear and tear here and there. And I don't care what grade it comes back at. But it's going to look beautiful uh, encased in solid air in a slab. So there it is. Super pleased. All right. Next up, you all know I'm working on this Dick Tracy run, the Harvey run specifically. I'm working on the Harvey Dick Tracy run, then I'll backpedal to the Dell run after that. But for now, we picked up Dick Tracy number 47. Look at that. And that old mischievous kid's always getting in trouble. A lot going on. I like how on these books, they often tend to write everything in there. You know, the escaping gas, the rubber band, cough, cough, sting. I mean, it's got all the little words written to tell you exactly what's going on. Very detailed. Dick Tracy, number 47. Working on that run pretty hard. Every time I go to a show, I, I stumble upon one or two, and I'm picking these up on the cheap. I try and get them, like, under 15. Dick Tracy's, I might go up to 20 bucks if it's a really good one. Uh, but I try to keep them low in price. And this one... Uh, I can't believe it, but I think it might be one of my favorite covers. And I say that a lot when I pick up these Dick Tracy's because they're so much fun. But this is Dick Tracy number 48. So it's funny. I found it's 47 and 48. Uh, of course, at the same booth right next to each other. So it's got a great mumbles appearance. And it's got a low... It's got like a stealth, a low-key um, bondage cover. So that girl's all tied up there in the chair. So a low-key bondage cover. Didn't know that was there. But very cool. This Harvey run. I'm closing in on it. But golly, is it a big run. So, uh, but we're getting there. Okay. So the next couple of books are books that I, I kind of like representations of a run, if that makes sense. So sometimes there's these, especially in Golden Age, there's these Golden Age runs, and I don't really need the whole run. And I definitely don't need... Like all the covers kind of look the same to me. It's hard to determine between them. I don't see a standout in the run. They're all about the same price, you know. So there's a couple of runs like that that I always keep my eye on. And if I see them in a box, I'm like, mm, is this a good representation? One such run is the shadow. I'm looking for a good shadow cover, um, golden age comic cover that has a shadow, has two guns, maybe some sort of villain involved, a damsel in distress would be great, but I want them guns ablaze, I want him to be wearing his hat. And it's funny, because when you start looking through, you don't find all those things uh, on one cover. So anyway, so much in that same vein, I've wanted a Green Hornet uh, comic as well, and I found one at the convention, and this one doesn't have everything, because it's missing the car. And I wanted one that had the car, but it's hard to get one that has the car and other things. So here is Green Hornet number 36 with just tremendously good color on this as well. I really got lucky with the color at the show today or this, this past weekend. Look at that. Green Hornet fights crime. It's got the Green Hornet. It's got Kato there as well. It's got this little like uh, Swami guy and he is telling the fortune. He's got his crystal ball and he's going to use that crystal ball to uncover the Green Hornet's true identity for this guy who has just the worst case of hat hair you've ever seen in your life. Uh, but then this part really gets me. So it says, um, what does it say? $50,000 reward. Who is the Green Hornet? And it's a newspaper. And the top of the newspaper says, Underworld News. So I'm like, Underworld News? Like, they had they actually had a printed newspaper for the, for the criminals? Like, that seems a bit much. It would seem like you're exposing yourself just a little. But hey, whatever works, folks. So there you go. Green Hornet with the uh, number 36. I wanted a good. And it's got a little bondage there, if you saw that in the side. So just a really good, really good Green Hornet cover. Super pleased with that. I may still find one with the car on it, but at this point, that's my Green Hornet book, if you will. 
All right, next up, we got Lady Luck. And this is number 88, technically, because this is when they were trying to avoid that tax stamp business for the Golden Age. So what this really is, is like issue number, I don't know, five or something, four or five. There's only a few issues in this run. And, um, and most of them have some sort of like joke on them. So this is the only cover in the run that is just a straight action cover with no kind of silliness involved. No, it almost has like a DC silliness sometimes that you see in the golden age. This is a quality uh, comic. So it says Crimedom's most beautiful enemy. And she is Lady Luck. And boy, does she look great. So just a great Lady Luck example. So another book where I just wanted one out of the run to, to have as an example of the run. And I might would collect the other ones. They're fairly inexpensive. This is this run. All the issues are about the same price. I think a $200 to $300 range per book. And for Golden Age, that's not bad. So I might go ahead and try and complete this run just because it's a cheaper run and all the covers are nice, but this is the one I wanted the most because it doesn't have any silliness on it. So, but good stuff. Next up, this book, I can't believe the deal I got on this book. All the books so far I've enjoyed and I got good prices on, you know, Bubsy's always working his deals. But this next book, I stole this book, I feel like. Uh, they had a good price on it, a very low price on it. And sometimes, you know, you can look at it one of two ways. Some people look at a deal like that and they're like, hey, there's a low price on that book. I'm going to buy it. I'm not messing around, just buying it. I know a lot and there's nothing wrong with that. But when I see a low price on a book, we're talking less than half what this book goes for. Then I, I immediately think that the dealer or whoever's selling it doesn't value this book the way the rest of the market values this book. And if I value the book the way the rest of the market values the book, then I think, and they don't, then perhaps there's still yet some room to wiggle a little bit. Most of the books, especially this was a wall book. So most of the books on the wall are going to be books that there's, there's a little bit of wiggle room on there. They wouldn't even put it on the wall. Like, I don't think I've ever bought a book off the wall for the price that was on it on the wall. Like, I don't think I've ever done that. Like you can always work down five ten percent hopefully closer to twenty percent like it's not hard to do if you just ask they'll usually at least move that much and so this book was on the wall and i just i just threw out a kind of a low number and this was like late on saturday and the guy was like you know what i'm having a really good day business has been great all day this is a great convention you got it, buddy. I was like, whoa. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm not a jerk about it. I'm, you know, I asked politely if he would accept this offer and I was willing to, to meet him somewhere in the middle, but here you go. Space Adventures, number 11, a fantastic Steve Ditko. And I know a lot of you silverheads are loving Steve Ditko Spider-Man, but this golden age sci-fi by Ditko, in my opinion, is his best work. I absolutely love it. It's got some sort of weird manta ray tentacled beast wrapped around that rocket ship. Dudes flying everywhere, caught up in the tentacles. It's just, it's just so good. It's got weird, you know, sea creatures and sea life on the floor. And it's just, it's just awesome. Like what more do you want? It's so good. A lot of bubble helmets. It's just great stuff. Just great stuff. So again, you know, I know that a lot of people like different artists for different reasons. Uh, Ditko, of course, famous for super for Spider-Man work, but this right here is some amazing work by Ditko and it's just wonderful. And this, this is a run that I'm heavily wanting to collect at least the Ditko covers <laughs> of which there's only three, I believe. And I already now have two of them. So I might just be in the market to pick up that third one over this next year. Be going to another couple of conventions before the year is out. So I'm going to heavily, it has bumped that one up to the top of the list. Now it is a longer run. The space adventures has, it's a longer run and not that long, but it's more than three issues of course. Uh, but to, that, to have that Ditko three issue set 
is what I'm after here. So, uh, so yeah, one book left, two down, one to go. Very excited about that. And we've got some Super Duck. You guys know I collect the old cockeyed wonder. So here's Super Duck number five with a great octopus cover. I also collect a lot of these octopus covers. So good stuff there. Super Duck, the cockeyed wonder, only collecting the issues that mention that he's the cockeyed wonder in the trade dress. At, at some point, they drop that off and it moves to Silver Age as uh, You know, it gets the comics code as well. I'm sure that's no surprise that they didn't want to put cockeyed wonder uh, with a comics code. So that got removed. And so that's where I stop. And then also, the first five issues of this run are MLJ as opposed to Archie. So this is the last MLJ. You can see the MLJ symbol there. This is the last MLJ published uh, issue in the run. Uh, of the MLJ issues, I only have two. Number one, of course, the first one, and number five. So I'd like to finish out that early run. Just they're awful hard to come by, uh, those earliest ones. Uh, next up, we have Super Duck number eight. Look at that. And he has scooped up old Fauntleroy in the vacuum. That's the, the kid, he's his, his ward, if you will. So Cockeyed Wonder is always making some Mr. Magoo. Look at his head is turned 360 there. Uh, he's always making, or 180. He's always making uh, trouble at Cockeyed Wonder. Uh, here is number 10. Just a cool little uh, flying cart. And I don't collect a lot of funny animal books, but I just like the, it says Cockeyed Wonder. Like the, I have to have the entire Cockeyed Wonder collection uh, in, in run in my collection. I just have to. Uh, next up, we got number 16. Super Duck the Cockeyed. Now, I already had this issue. I didn't know it. I didn't, you know, I try to remember, but I didn't think I had, I didn't recognize it. This one's pretty rough. Actually, my original copy is better than this, so... It is what it is. I might let, let this one go or give it away. But there's Cockeyed Wonder. Super Duck, the Cockeyed Wonder, number 16. And then I also, uh, the only book that I picked up that wasn't Golden Age is a reprint of a Golden Age book. And I got it because I want to be able to slab my other one. But the story inside is so freaking good that I couldn't do it. So here is uh, Weird Science, number 20. I think this might be the Gladstone reprints, if I'm not mistaken, but I have to check on that. Uh, it doesn't say Gladstone on it, but it says just EC. But here's a here's an EC reprint, I guess, of Weird Science number 20 with the great Wally Wood cover art with all the girls in tubes. You all know I collect girls in tubes covers. So there you go. Now this book, the, the original book, right? This is obviously a reprint, has in it a story that's, that's named 50 Girls 50. And it's just an absolutely fantastic story. It's a nice little tight, it's very short, it's just a few pages, but it's the reference of this cover. And it's just really, really good. And my issue is that I didn't want to slab the other book, my original, and never be able to read that story again because it's so it's twisted and good. So I wanted to get a reprint of it. It was the only reprint I was after, and I and I went. And the guy had had some reprint books, and I told my I just told my wife I'd like to get a re. This guy had some reprints I saw, and I want to go through them and see if I can find issue number twenty of Weird Science. And lo and behold, he had it, and it's a perfect, it's an absolutely perfect copy of this book, super clean and crisp. So I'm super happy to have it. So now I can I can in good conscience, uh, and also this is newsprint inside, which is really nice. So I can uh, go ahead and get that slabbed and not feel like I'm, you know, robbing myself of future enjoyment of reading it. So really looking forward to that. And that's it. That's my haul. Uh, we'll catch you next time. And, and Bubs World, remember, uh, and go to Heroes Con next year. If you haven't been, go. So it's like, I don't have the budget. Just, just go. And then if you only buy dollar books, who cares? Plenty of people had a great time buying 50 cent and dollar books there at the con. So you could be that guy too. So you don't have to worry about that. It's not about how much money you spend at the con. It's about meeting up with everybody, having a good time. And it's just an amazing con experience. So anyway, all that aside, remember to read a comic and don't apologize for the glare. Bye-bye. Now subscribe, you egg-sucking pieces of gutter trash. Now.